thank you for joining us. I am Gina Ganskop, the Education Director here at the Penobscot Marine Museum. Today's Junior Adventurers program will have some cool facts, craft ideas, and a trip to one of our exhibits. I want to give a big thank you to our members and those who, of you who choose to donate to support our programming at Penobscot Marine Museum. More information about the upcoming speakers, membership, and donating can be found on our website and our Facebook page. This programming has been made possible in part by the National Endowment for the Humanities, exploring the human endeavor. Throughout this program, please ask us questions and share your comments by posting below. So today we are going to talk about lumbering and the logging industry in Maine. In the 1800s, lumbering was a major industry in Maine and Bangor was the preeminent lumber town of the region from the 1830s through 1880. Loggers lived together in camps during the cutting season and logging was a winter activity. Do you have any idea why logging would be a winter activity? Think about it, we'll return to it later. Do you remember reading any stories about logging or a lumberjack? I'll give you a clue. If you've been to Bangor, Maine, there's a statue of a famous lumberjack. And I can show you a picture of that statue. Just a second here. We will get that pulled up so you can see it. There you go. So who is this? Paul Bunyan is a lumberjack in American and Canadian folklore. And this statue here was built in 1959 and it is still there. The character of Paul Bunyan likely originated in storytelling of North American loggers like the men working in Maine's logging camps. The story of Paul Bunyan is a uh, tall tale, it's in the genre of tall tales. The description in, in his stories are exaggerated and much greater than in real life, and it makes the stories really entertaining. For example, I will tell you about his friend, Babe. Do you know what color Babe was? We will find out. As you know, here's, here's one of the Paul Bunyan stories. As you know, Maine is very cold for most of the year. One day it started to snow and it was so cold, the snow was blue. The snow covered Paul Bunyan's house and kept falling until the forest was covered. Paul put on his snowshoes and went out to see the snow. He discovered an animal stuck in the snow and when he freed it, Paul realized it was a baby ox. He took the baby ox home with him and put it near the fireplace to warm up. After the ox got warmer, his hair stayed blue. Paul decided to keep the blue ox and named him Babe. And there are many other really fun, interesting stories about Paul Bunyan and his pal Babe. So what tools does a lumberjack use? What tools do you see Paul Bunyan using in this sculpture. So do you see his ax that he carries over his shoulder like that? And then the other tool he has is kind of unique. And this is called a peavey. And we'll talk a little bit more about that one later. So now, we're gonna take the opportunity to actually make an ax like Paul Bunyan has. And to do that, all you need uh, are a paper towel roll and some duct tape, or you can be creative. If you have some tin foil, that will kind of do the trick too scissors, and either some loose cardboard, or if you happen to have some cardboard sleeves, these work really well. You need two of them. And our goal is to make an ax that looks something like this. So you can carry it over your shoulder like Paul Bunyan. 
So let me switch over so you can see my hands and we will try to make one. Okay. So you're gonna take your two uh, cardboard sleeves, or if you're if you're making this with just a piece of cardboard, you can draw kind of an ax shape on and then cut it out. If you have these sleeves, you're just gonna do something like that. And then you're going to cover it in duct tape, completely cover it. Start there. And then through some internet magic, suddenly I have it done. There we go. Next step, take your paper towel roll and your scissors, and we're gonna cut just kind of a slight wedge into the top. There we go. And you can experiment with it. If you need to make it bigger, you can. Looks like I'm gonna need to make it a little bit bigger. And you put the ax head into the slot. There we go. And if you wanna make it more secure, you can use your duct tape and cover that more, or you can leave it like that. I also recommend decorating along the handle. You can make it look like wood, or you can make it whatever colors you wanna make it. And there you go. Now you have an ax. I will switch it back to me. There we go. And if you do make an axe, please share it with us below. We'll be able to see them and we'll get notifications and it'll be exciting to see. So now let's see. Now we will take a visit into our Working the Bay exhibit in the Merrith U House to find out more about logging in Maine. I'm going, we're gonna take the visit to Working the Bay exhibit. Hold on one second, I'm gonna try this again. Okay. After the American Revolution, Massachusetts and Maine no longer sent white pines to Britain for naval ship masts. Instead, they used them for local shipbuilding and milled lumber for a growing building market. By the mid 19th century, Bangor was the lumber capital of the world and often shipped more than 200 million board feet annually. Between 1832 and 1888, Bangor shipped out 8.7 billion board feet of lumber. Trees were cut in the late fall and winter when it was easier to move them on snow to the nearest river. In spring, using rivers swelled by snowmelt and rain, loggers floated logs downstream to places like Bangor and Ellsworth. There, sawmills cut logs into long lumber called deals for beams, planks, and boards, or into small lumber for shingles, clapboards, lathes, and fence posts. 
Winter lumbering complemented shipping. Ice often blocked the Penobscot River from December through March. Once navigation opened, the Spring Rivers brought winter-cut lumber downriver, where a fleet of vessels carried it to the expanding cities of the U.S. eastern seaboard, the Caribbean, and South America. Steam tugs, introduced on the river sometime before 1850, could, for a fee, make the passage up and down the river much faster. Many sailing captains, however, chose to save towing charges. The larger schooners of the 1870s helped more lumber reach a bigger market. In 1860, there were 3,376 vessel arrivals in Bangor. So that was a little trip into our exhibit about logging. And just a reminder, if you have any questions or comments, please post them below. Okay. Do you remember the other tool Paul Bunyan was carrying? We can look at it one more time. So there's his ax and here is his peavey, this thing here. And you might've noticed a few in the exhibit too. Interestingly, the PV was invented here in Maine in 1857. According to the PV Manufacturing Company, uh, this is the how the story went when, um, when it was invented. He jumped up, as the story goes, went back to his blacksmith shop and directed his son Daniel to make a clasp with lips, then make holes in the lips to put a bolt through on which to hang a dog or hook and toe rings below the clasp to the bottom of the handle. Finally, a pick was driven into the end of the handle. The tool was turned over to river driver, William Hale, who pronounced it a great success. So I'll show you another picture that I have of, of uh, loggers and some PVs. And they're, they're kind of interesting to look at. Um, can you see what, the, what are the loggers wearing? And what time of year is it? You can see from the snow on the ground that it's sometime during the winter season. And that was helpful. It, it made it a little easier to navigate around the woods. It was cold though, so they're dressed fairly warmly. You can see they have sweaters on and their hats and some work pants and some pretty hardcore boots they have going on too. And this is a good view also of the bottom of the PV. So there you can see how this hook here can swing out and back. And then it has a pointed end too, which is stuck in the snow in this picture. What other details do you see in this picture? You can see the horse back there, probably would have been used to pull the logs. So now, can you be innovative? Can you make your own PV using the same materials that you made your ax with? If you do give it a try, post your pictures below. We would love to see it. And so today was our second Junior Adventurers on Facebook and we'll be coming back on Wednesday mornings at 11 o'clock. And so I hope to see you again. Um, thank you for joining us today and um, we'll be back next week for more, more main stories, crafts, and fun. Thank you.